So you may be wondering why I dug a hole in my backyard that's 18 and a half feet long, three feet wide, and 16 inches deep. And I'm gonna show you. Definitely was not for the fun of it. I purchased a four post rotary alignment lift uh, from a, a local business that was upgrading just to a, a new one. Uh, it's quite old. It still worked. They're still using it um, up to the day that, that I tore it out of there. And I knew it had some rust on it, uh, but it's a little worse than, than I thought. There's the bottom of the, the lift post have some rust. Uh, this has some rust. This isn't, isn't the, bad, the bad part. Um, there's two air jacks. I've already taken all the cables and pulleys and plates off it. And it came with this Hunter alignment machine. It's kind of an old one. Uh, it's a 511, I guess. Printer. Bunch of other stuff. It's got the cables. It's not a fancy uh, laser one, but it's a lot cheaper. I'm going to see how it works. Again, I'm just doing this for a hobby. I'm not, uh, I'm not a business or anything like that. I just work on my own stuff. And then here are the long ramps, and this is why I dug that, that trench. Um, they're kind of rusty. I want to clean them up. I tried sandblasting, but it was going to take forever, and I'd go through a ton of media. Uh, the part that concerns me the most is right here. Um, it had those stainless plates over them with the things on it that allowed it to move. And I took those off, and there's a good layer of rust. And after chipping it away and beating on it with a hammer, um, I actually punctured through in two spots. So right here, I'm going to have to cut it out and, and weld in uh, some new steel. But I'm hoping everywhere else I'll be able to clean the rust up. And that big trench is for electrolysis. So I'm going to use some washing soda, a battery charger, some wire, some old steel, um, put a tarp inside that trench, fill it up, and hopefully uh, remove all of the, the rust on it using electrolysis. So if you're seeing this video, it means two things. Uh, one, it means it must have worked because I sure as hell wouldn't show it if it didn't work. And two, I probably didn't electrocute myself because I'll be here to upload it. All right, I've just started the electrolysis. I'm just going to go over exactly what I did. Um, so I got a tarp from Harbor Freight. It's 12 by 20 feet. It's their super tough, most thickest uh, one they have, like 12, 12 mil maybe. Uh, $30 minus 20% off. And I laid that in the hole. And I got the ramp in there. And underneath the ramp, I've just got some 4x4 posts. And underneath the 4x4 posts is a towel that's folded up because I didn't want the corners or edges of the 4x4 to puncture the tarp at all. Um, after that, I went ahead and I did the wiring. So surrounding this ramp is some 4x2 uh, I don't know if you can see it. Some 4x2 uh, steel square tubing. It kind of looks, or it's exactly like this actually. That's what it is. Uh, just some long pieces that I had. My friend built the table several years ago out of it, and he had a few pieces left over. So I've got two on each side that run the length of it more or less. Um, that that uh, tubing is daisy chained with some copper wire. So the positive terminal goes to some copper wire that goes to the first section of that square tubing. And then on the other end of the square tubing, it daisy chains to the next one, runs through the square tubing, goes all the way over to the other side. You can see it over there. And it, it repeats and it goes back and it ends over there. So that's ran in series. And that square tubing is surrounding the part. Uh, it doesn't... It doesn't touch the part. You don't want it to touch the part. You want it to be 
somewhat close and run the length of it. And then the negative side of the charger goes directly to the part itself. Um, so I took an angle grinder and I ground off uh, an area down to bare metal right on the end. I also did one in the middle and then I did one on the other end and I've got three wires that run and they all meet and they go right to this, right to that negative terminal. As for the, the water, it's mostly water, but electricity doesn't conduct um, through water, it goes through the impurities. Uh, so I had to get, had to get some of this, that's what everyone seems to use, uh, super washing soda, sodium carbonate. And I put four boxes in, um, I added them to these five gallon buckets first and stirred them around and then I, I dumped them in and that'll, that'll give the electricity something to flow through. This is safe for the environment, it's stuff that you add to your, your washing machine. Um, and the electrolysis uh, byproduct that it makes is just hydrogen, which is the most common element and is everywhere anyways. Uh, you want to definitely use washing soda. You don't want to use baking soda, that's sodium bicarbonate. And that in the, the metal that you run around it, you also want to use mild steel. You don't want to use stainless steel because that can also uh, produce some kind of chemical that is also not good. Uh, so that's it. Um, I was able to get the ramp in very carefully. I dragged it off my trailer so it was beside it. Um, I put pipes running across, just two pipes, and I was able to get it onto the pipes myself and kind of wiggle one end um, over and then the other and repeat until I had it suspending right where I needed it. And I took this log right there and I used that as a leverage point with this 4x4 and I was able to kind of pry it up, have a friend pull the pipe out, and then lower it carefully and then do the same to the other side. Um, so I did that, I did the wiring, I added the, the mixture, um, I added these boards across it just to, just because I plan on putting some more tarps over the top of it. I'm going to leave a, a vent hole on each side for the, for the hydrogen that it, that it creates. I don't want any animal or anything uh, running into that. Um, there's some bunnies around here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take an old screen um, from the house and I'll put one on each side so it, so it vents. Um, right now, I've got this running at 15 amp. Um, I've only got a 2 amp and a 15 amp um, mode, so I'm going to try it on 15 amp. I had these other chargers, but uh, they would auto kick off. Must be they detected they weren't charging anything, so they'd run for like 30 seconds and then and then kick off. Um, so I have to use my big my big charger at 15 amps. All right, I changed it up just a little. Um, I got the tarps laid out like I said I would, and I put a bunch of wood and stuff across it in case the wind picks up. In the center I've got some chicken coop mesh, so hopefully nothing can fall through there and that should allow um, the hydrogen to escape. Then over here just more wood. Um, I also moved the battery charger inside and just ran some 12-2 out for the, the wiring, that way it doesn't have to be outside in the hot sun. It's nice and cool in the garage. And it seems to still be doing, doing its thing. It's been going for about an hour or so now. Uh, I'm gonna check back tomorrow. So here's a quick in progress. It's Thursday now, I've been running it since Sunday. Um, every other day, I gotta take the, the, sacrifice, the sacrificial metal out um, to clean it. And just to give you an idea what it looks like, this was brand new steel when I started. And it just uh, attracts the rust and it gets eaten up too. You can see this one that I've already cleaned is, is pitted. Uh, all I do is I, I hose it down with a wire brush to get the big stuff off it and then take my, my uh, wire wheel on an angle grinder just to clean the rest of the rust off it. Then I hook it all back up and after 48 hours I do it again. I did have everything daisy chained and it made it a pain to remove them. I'd have to undo the bolts each time. Uh, so what I did is I cut the wire and skinned it and I just use a, a wiring nut in between them so I can just undo the wiring nut so I can take out one section at a time. This kind of shows the, the operation. 
Um, here's another little piece that I made to go underneath it. I've got another one under there already, and I'm shuffling them down uh, as as I go every every time I move it down a, a few feet. I'm told that it's line of sight, meaning the rust you want to remove has to be visible to the to the sacrificial metal that you have in there. Um, but I don't know if that's 100% exact because I'm getting that rust and corrosion building up on the back side of the metal, the top, the bottom. I think it works best when it's line of sight, but I think the other areas it does pull from as well. And maybe once all the rust is gone that's right in front of it, it'll pull more uh, from, from the rest of it. Who knows? But it is cleaning it. Um, I can, there's, the water is kind of rust colored, uh, but I can, I can scrape it with my hands. I can see that there are spots that are bare metal. Um, there's chunks of paint that I've been able to just rip off with my hands that had rust on the back side. It's loosened, loosened all up. I don't know if you can see it, but I've been throwing it in that bucket and I've kind of ran my hand along the bottom of the tarp carefully to scoop up some of the big rust that's, that's fallen to the bottom. But seems to be working. I'm gonna keep at it probably till Sunday and that'll be my next video when I remove it. If everything works well, I'm going to put the other, the other ramp in and, and get that one going. So I just took it out and I'm hosing it off and just giving it a light scrape and then I'm going to flip it over. You can see this rust just comes right off it. It even takes some of the paint off. You can see it's bare metal underneath all this stuff on top so I'm gonna keep doing that get it get the stuff cleaned off it and then hopefully get it inside where I can wire wheel it good where it's out of the elements can't leave it out here because it's gonna rain tonight so here's an update of how everything stands. Both ramps have gone through the electrolysis in the pit out back. Um, I was able to drag them in here, hose them off, blow them off, and all the thick rust just came right off. They looked really good uh, as they're drying, and over the last week or so, they've kind of flash rusted. It'll scrape off pretty easy with a wire brush. Um, so I'm going to have to wire wheel everything before I, before I uh, primer and paint them, um, but that's fine. I got both areas cut out with my plasma cutter, and I've measured for the new seal. It's actually the same size for each, uh, 20 inches wide by 54 and 3 quarter inch long. So that's going to sit right on this, this top edge and get welded on the outside, welded on the inside and then welded to this, to that lip. Um, so there's a few other areas underneath that I'm gonna fix as well. This one's in there solid, but one of these is, the weld is broke on one side. So I'll fix that. What I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with is uh, these, this track section. So this was all rust, and you can see that all of that came out with the electrolysis, and that rust had pushed this metal all the way out. So I mean, I can I can cut all these welds, hammer it back in, and weld it. Um, I'm debating just taking the whole strip off and getting a replacement. Uh, we'll we'll see. It's got to be a lot of work either way. You can see where they added extra weld joints over the years is more evident here. See all that stitching um, in this area. The the gap was kind of not big enough for me to push that stuff through. But all those spot welds I'll have to cut or do something with. So that's the, the ramp status. I've been soaking each one of these posts in vinegar, apple cider vinegar. And after about a week for each of them, this is what it looks like. I'm able to pretty much rinse it off and wire brush it slightly. This one I probably should have left in there a little longer. Um, but I'm going to hit it with a sandblaster anyways. This was just to get the big thick rust off and the inside of the post uh, look, look the same. 
So a few more days on that one that's soaking, and I'll pull that out. The air jack situation. I've got this one cleaned up. This other air jack's not going as high. I think it may be low on fluid. I'm going to mess with that tonight to see if I can get it all the way up. Uh, but I've cleaned out the inside. I was going to try to take it all apart, but some of this, this X, uh, X skeleton stuff is actually welded to the bottom plate, so you can't completely disassemble it. So I'm just going to have to leave it as is and clean it up the best that I can. The inside's pretty clean anyways. It's just mostly this, this outer part and underneath, which I'll be able to get to. Um, I'll probably wire wheel it. I could put it in like six inches of water and do electrolysis. I, I haven't decided yet. I can probably sandblast some of it. We'll, we'll see. And I still got to finish cleaning this one up, which is kind of messy. This one was way more rusty than, than this one. These wheels, I was going to look into new ones, and I did. They're about $260 for a set of four. So that's kind of pricey, so I'm going to try to use what's there. I don't know if the center is a little worn or I can press some kind of uh, filler bushing in the middle. This one, has been soaking for about 24 hours in apple cider vinegar. You can see this wheel is completely frozen. It's been dragged. It's, it's beat up. Uh, I'm hoping it'll come free and I'll be able to, to pound that in and, and weld the areas where it's worn and grind it back into shape and just make it work. So this is going to take probably a while. So I'm setting up another one for electrolysis over here. I got to get some more um, washing soda tonight, but I'll do electrolysis on this because I think electrolysis is a lot faster. And you can see where these square posts, this thing's upside down, but this is just a solid chunk of steel that goes in this hollow square tube. And then there's an Allen key bolt that goes through this wheel. And that's what goes into the square tube. So if you get this Allen key bolt out, this should slide out, assuming it's not rusted in there. And then I'll be able to, to clean that all up. Uh, so hopefully electrolysis will, will free the stuck wheels and that steel uh, square, square tubing area. So that's pretty much it. The new metal. Uh, I have sent my friend the dimensions today. He's friends with the owner. And uh, it's going to get me the steel cut. And then the other stuff I need to clean up. And I guess one last thing are these cross sections and these have some rust they're still really solid I, I debated electrolysis on them but electrolysis will also strip paint away and I don't want to lose the paint that's kind of on the inside uh, so I'm probably gonna attack these with just a, a wire wheel and maybe a sandblaster because it's, it's really just this top section and in the side here and the other the other areas aren't that bad. So it's, it's just the part where the ramp bolts to on, on each of them. Here's another quick update. I got the steel cut for these replacement plates. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was $90 for both sides, so $45 a piece. Um, it fits fairly well. I had to grind a little bit off one of the edges to get it to drop in, but that should work. And you can see where the, the metal on the side is kind of bowed out. Um, so I'm going to clamp this in when we go to weld it. So this will be right on the top. I've got the last post soaking. Uh, I'm going to pull that out probably tomorrow and clean that off. I've got some electrolysis going on the air jack sliders, and this is what the air jack sliders look like. So it goes just like this, and this one's upside down, but there's a spring that would go in here, and then this steel 
square thing would, would go in as well. Um, once it's shoved in there, the wheel and stuff bolts to it from the front side. So you basically have the wheel sticking out right here and this will float, it'll raise off the track when you move it. And when you start to air jack something up, it'll compress that spring. And then this thick part right here will go into this, this uh, groove and that's what lifts the car. So the wheel's gotta roll right along this. And then when you lift it, that thick part will make contact down there. Now these channels, are really awful, they're rusted, they're bowed out. It was really bad on this side. Um, I was actually able to get all the rust out. It was bowed out so much. Um, but there's some areas where it's much tighter and you can see it's, it's starting to swell and it's still too tight of a gap for me to puncture through. Uh, so I priced it out. I'm gonna replace that channel. Uh, it's gonna cost about $70 worth of materials. So it's kind of stupid not to, I'll be able to cut it all off behind it and have a brand new channel that's not all warped. Uh, the air jacks, I pressure washed them just so I could see what I was working with. Um, they seem to work. This one didn't go up as high, uh, but it was low on fluid, so I added some fluid and now it goes up just as high as the other one. These are where those things with the wheels slide in. Um, this one's is, is kind of rustier. What I'm gonna do, I think, is build a little box uh, so I can soak them in about five inches of water. Or so I'll, I'll move the, the piston things out of the way so they're not, the, the hydraulic pumps aren't in the way or under submerged in water. Um, but I'll get the water level up to about here or so. And I'm gonna run electrolysis on these just, just so it cleans up and I'll have some good metal to work with when I do the epoxy primer. And I got these sanded down. They flash rusted some, uh, but I think these are more or less ready, ready to go. These weren't that bad. And then these posts, I'll have to sandblast the bottom quickly to get the flash rust off the molasses or vinegar, apple cider vinegar, I guess. Um, Seem to clean them pretty well. They've just flash rusted. And this stuff up here, this looks like a latex paint. I think someone just took like a roller to it or brushed it on being, uh, being cheap. Uh, I'll probably, I wanna paint these, so I don't think going over latex paint is gonna work. So I'll probably have to get that latex paint off, maybe with some stripper, or maybe I can just sand it off, or it may even peel off with a putty knife. Um, it's, it's not very durable. I can scratch it with my finger now. So get that off, get that welded in, replace the channel, electrolysis on the air jacks, and then give everything a quick wire wheel and I'll be ready for uh, epoxy primer. So here's the latest update. <clears throat> I got both ramps back on the lift, so I'll be able to bring them outside to do a little sandblasting on them and roll it back in. My friend welded in the plates for me both sides, he stitched weld, welded the underside. Uh, some of the cross pieces had broken welds, so we took care of that. And now that's what's left to do is to give them a quick wire wheel to get most of the surface rust off. And then the inner portion, so this one's upside down, uh, it's extremely pitted, so I'm gonna wanna sandblast this area because the wire wheel won't get into all of those pits. And then I gotta decide what I wanna do here, if I just wanna put some filler, if I wanna try to weld in a plate for more reinforcement. It still seems pretty thick, um, but I haven't decided on that, or maybe some filler on the outside and then weld in a reinforcement plate on the inside, or just give it a go as is. It's a 12,000 pound lift. I'm never gonna put more than probably 7,000 pounds on it, um, but we'll, we'll see. I, I have a friend coming over to look at it to, Tell me what he thinks I should do. So that's the ramps. Um, I also got the rails for the for the air jacks cut off. So that's this side and technically this side over here. And I did get the new material. You can see it down here, but I got the wrong size angle. 
this is an inch. I guess I need an inch and a quarter. So they said I can uh, return it since I haven't cut it, exchange it for an inch and a quarter, pay the difference. So I've got to do that before we weld those back on. Everything else over here is more or less the same. I need to sandblast the bottoms. I did get all the latex paint off with a pressure washer. And I did put one of these air jacks into an electrolysis uh, pool, just the lower, probably five inches or so for the bottom of this one. The other one was fine, uh, but this one was, was pretty rusted. So it's surface rust sense from flash rusting, but uh, I'll, I'll clean that up before I paint. And then over here, or actually that, that ramp I also did electrolysis on, so it's taking the rust off. The other ramp is in the pool. That's the only thing that's left for electrolysis. It's also raining right now, which is why I'm not going to really do anything today, because I don't want to make a mess and get a lot of dust in here. And I ordered the, the paint, and this all came from Summit. Uh, it's around $240 for just the, the paint stuff. Um, add in another $60 for this, these sandpaper rolls. And I, I bought some of these a long time ago, and I'm just I'm starting to run out. So this sandpaper is not all going to be used for this project. So I don't consider that really a cost for it. Uh, but some direct metal epoxy primer. So this is actually two gallons because it comes with a gallon, and it mixes with a one-to-one -one ratio uh, with this catalyst, and that's meant to go directly on on metal. And then this was around like $80 for the surface primer. So this is high build. Um, I figured it would be good because there's some pitting and imperfections. I don't want to go too crazy with a ton of filler or anything, but if I put some of that on it and give it a quick block sand, it'll probably look better. And this is the activator. I think it's four to one. And then this is the paint. And I went with, so I have the color on here, something, oh yeah, ultra blue pearl. And it's got to be glossy. It's got to have some pearl in it. I looked at all the blues. They didn't have like a basic blue. And I didn't want to spend uh, $160 going with a different brand paint. So here we are outside. I've got these all cleaned up, sanded. Um, I took the sandblaster to get the flash rust off the bottom. All four of them. And I'm about to spray some epoxy primer. I also got the ends for the the air jacks right there. So it's about 76 degrees out. Humidity is about 75, so I'm gonna get started before it warms up more. So here's the latest update where everything is. Uh, I got all four posts epoxy primered, added some filler primer, sanded them, and painted them, just doing kind of a quick job. So the posts are ready to go. The air jacks, I haven't really touched. Um, I got this moving cart for free though that can actually jack them up about three feet to make them easier to work on. And I'm going to take the sandblaster to some of it and start this painting process. It's probably going to take longer than the other stuff because I'll have to uh, work on kind of half of it 
get it painted, let it dry really good before I can flip it upside down and work on the other half. And then I got the cross sections uh, all cleaned up and painted. As for these pieces, uh, I've cleaned up where the tracks are gonna go. They're, they're primered with some weldable primer. Um, I added the same primer to the stuff that's gotta be welded to it, and I need to get that done with. These go to the air jacks, and I've got those epoxy primered. They, they still need to be painted. So it's getting there, slow and steady. Time for another update. I got these things painted, at least for one of them. You can see how pitted they were from the rust, but there's not much I can do about that. Maybe not use a, a glossy paint. It would help hide it, or I could have tried some fuller primer, I guess, but I didn't. This is what I'm cleaning up now. I had the lower portion in electrolysis a while ago. It's all flash rusted. Uh, but I'm going to sandblast it. I got the piston taped off so I won't get any sand that goes down in there. I think the electrolysis helps get all the thick stuff off and then it makes sandblasting really easy. And then over here, I've got this one all painted. I decided just to do the pistons blue and make it, make it easier and try to do that black. Um, I drilled holes uh, to mount the, the pump before it just had one bolt in one of them uh, using one of the existing holes. Um, so it will be secured with four things now. And it's about 90 degrees out. And I have this little tent thing over it because it was supposed to rain the other night and the paint was still kind of soft. I wanted to protect it and uh, it didn't end up raining. So. I lucked out there. I'm gonna let this harden. Um, it's, it's hard to the touch. I can't really indent it with my fingernail or anything, but I'm gonna give it another 24 hours um, before I set it on anything in the garage. And then hopefully tomorrow I'll primer and paint this one. Both center air jacks are all painted. Brought inside, obviously. I took all the masking tape off them and I cleaned up the, the mounts for the hydraulic pumps. They're not bolted on right now, but you can see the holes. I pre-drilled them before I painted. So those are done. This is the big news. You'll notice the track is all welded on each side. It only took about an hour and a half to do. My buddy welded it, I didn't, but I cut it, got it marked where I wanted it and he just went to town on it. So I'll be able to clean these up, give them a quick sandblast and work on painting these. I'm gonna do them one at a time. I'm gonna start uh, this, this weekend. It's gotta take twice as long, maybe four times as long because they're twice as big as anything I've painted and I can't do it all at once. I'm gonna have to have it upside down, sandblast, epoxy primer that, let it dry really good, flip it over, do the other side, epoxy primer. Then once it's all uh, coated, I'll paint the underside and I'll spend some more time on, on the top because I want to use some filler primer on the sides and stuff. But I'm glad that's done. And I'm about to mix up some yellow paint. I just finished sandblasting these pieces and they've got uh, two, three coats of epoxy primer on it and I'll be putting the yellow on it. Those are what go on top of the air jacks and there were some things that would flip up top that would pivot on these uh, little dowels that stick out. I took those off. I've, I've looked online. I can buy like a big three by six inch pad and I'm just gonna glue them or maybe just set them there so if I wanted to move them around I can uh, and I, I think that'll be safer and it's not gonna muck up any of my control arms or anything. So that's it for now. So this weekend I worked on getting both ramps sandblasted both top and bottom 
and I've got some epoxy primer on the underside, and then I put some filler primer um, right on right on the bottom. You can kind of see how it's got like a, a matted finish. That's because uh, the rust had eaten into the metal a little. So I have some filler primer here, and hopefully when I sand it, it'll smooth it out some, and it'll be less noticeable. Uh, so that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm going to sand the edges, and then I'll put some paint on the underside. And i got to let that dry really good for probably two, three days. Then I'll be able to flip both of them, and then I'll be able to work on the tops. Uh, it's very time-consuming doing the bottom because I can't get the gun up under here. So I actually have to get under here with a brush, and, and even, even this wall, I had to like brush the, the first few inches because you can kind of get a spray gun in sideways, but you can't really get up um, on this underside with it. Maybe they make a special gun for that, but I'm not going to buy one just to do these four undersides. So it's coming along. Definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Uh, I'll be glad when it's done. So a huge milestone today. I got the ramps fully painted. They're all done. I'm glad that I don't have to flip these or really mess with them much more aside for getting them off the trailer and lined up. I'm gonna give the paint probably two or three days to, to fully harden. It's dried to the touch now, but it's, it's automotive paint, so it takes a few days to, to harden up. And I'll probably start installing it before I, before I finish everything else. Um, so all that's left, aside from reassembly, obviously, is some of the pins for those pulleys. They go in from the underside, so the, the bottom part that's exposed, I'm, I'm just going to clean them up so I can paint the lower part uh, blue. I've got these yellow things that go on the front. That's so you don't drive off the, the ramps. Um, I think they're blue and someone threw some yellow paint on them, probably for some safety feature when it was in the shop or some regulation. Uh, but I've got a sand blast those. Those are going to be yellow. And I started working on these tonight. I sand blasted them. This one's going to need some work. This is the underside of that plate that the, the balls rotate on. I could get new steel, potentially, and, and make another. Um, but this is the worst spot. Can't, you can't really see it, um, but every spot where there is a ball, it's like sunken in, there's, there's divots there. Um, and it's only on this side, so I'm just gonna have to weld those divots full and then grind it flat. That way the, the plates will, will spin freely. So get those done and painted. Um, that's the other one. And then behind it is the ramps. And I had added some filler material uh, where the there is kind of thin from rust. This is the stuff that I like doing best. It's all all painted. I got my trailer out of the garage. My RX-7's out of the way. This is about where it's got to go. Uh, my favorite thing to do is the, the reassembly. So I'm just taking my time, replacing all the, the rusted hardware with, with stainless steel stuff. I got these airlocks cleaned up. I sandblasted those, painted them silver. Uh, I didn't like how they attached, so I made um, s some of these plastic washers, and those are going to go right behind there so that it's not going to want to rub the paint at all. Um, stainless washers here, stainless pins, new stainless bolts and washers. Uh, these are also stainless. These are for some covers that go there, and they're rubber, and they're all dry rotted out. I had an old mud flap, um, so I made I made my own. I'm going to have to kind of heat them up and bend them so that they contour over that. Uh, but I'm going to wait until it's installed to, to do that. And I got to put the cables and stuff back in. But all stainless hardware. Right here, these were a pain to find. I got these from McMaster Car. And they didn't have the exact same thing. I actually looked everywhere. These are what rotary cells and you can still get these. I think they're like $60 a bolt, which is ridiculous. Um, these are $12, $13. And it's just a half inch collar here. It's an Allen head top and this thread pitch right here is 7 dash 13. And that's what I couldn't find. I, could, I couldn't find anything that had a half inch 
neck, but seven sixteenths here. So this is a half inch neck, and this is half inch dash 13 thread, so it's thicker. So all of these holes that they go in, I had to drill out and tap a little bigger, uh, but that seemed to work fine, and for $12 a, a bolt and it's stainless, this will look a lot better and last a lot, a lot longer as well. Um, so new hardware there. I figured out how my diagram is gonna go for my vacuum line. Um, I didn't pay too much attention when I took it all apart, uh, but most, most of the time stuff can only go one way. So I've got all these fittings to go in. I need to get some stainless rod uh, to go between here to here and here. There's gonna be two sections. And this is what the air hose rides on that brings the air from the, the lift to the center jack. And that's what was on it. And there's an orange one over there. I've ordered some replacements for that. I've got all new wine coming as, as well. So that should be here next week. And then I think the last thing to cover is over here. These are the, the turn plates and I cleaned up those balls. I was gonna buy new ones uh, because two of them were actually broken, uh, but they want $270 per side. So $270 would get you three of these and the balls that go for it. So if, if you bought like a hunter lift, each one of these is like $20, $30 a piece, but they're a different size. Um, so I, I plastic welded these. There was a big section missing out. I used some aluminum screen and kind of heat it up so it would sink into the, the plastic. And then I, I just filled in the rest with uh, plastic weld. So that's ready to go. Um, I've got, got these on here. I still got to do the other one. Um, they slide. I, I lubed them really well. Uh, I've got these in here. Now when I started, when I started with the, the lift, like I had all I could do to get these out. I had to hammer them out and it, it probably took me an hour to get them all freed up. Uh, but, but they're painted, they slide, I've got the, the wheels on them. So when this sits on the lift, the, the weight of this uh, has got to hover because these are spring loaded. But once you start jacking it up and that goes under the car, it's got to push this wheel up. I can't even move it with my hand. That's how heavy the spring is. And then this is what's got to sit in that track. Uh, so I still got a lube inside here, the pivot points for, for this, but this looks a million times better. Um, and I've just messing around with some stainless hardware. Uh, I got to bolt these on. And then these are the little safety uh, latch things. And on here, there's some stainless uh, bolts that I have in there and these will go on it, and this just keeps it locked on the track so that it's not gonna fall off. And the ones that came on it were really rusty, uh, bent up, and there's no saving them. I had, I had this laying around, so I just cut some sections, drilled some holes, and, and made new ones. It's getting very close to being installed. I just wanted to go over it quickly while I have the post out so I can show you what I've had to replace. Um, so everything, is in, I've measured diagonally to kind of get it square. All the cables are in, everything is greased. And I noticed, the, the first thing I noticed is that one of the cables was pretty bad. You can kind of bend it and you can see that it's frayed. And fortunately it happened to be the shortest cable, which was the cheapest one, which is this back corner. So I had to buy a new cable um, all the other cables were, were actually fine. And I think the others were replaced because if you look at the end of the bad cable, it's got this hard yellow thing right at the bottom. None of the other cables have that. So I think someone replaced three cables and not four. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, maybe it wasn't bad at the time. So they set it aside and just replaced three of them. Uh, I, I contacted the guy, I got it from him. He said he's never seen another cable laying around the shop. So I ordered it, 125 bucks. And then I was putting all the wheels in and I got over to one of them and the, the wheel was bad. It, it actually elongated out in the center. The hole was too round, the pulley flopped away. So I had to buy a new wheel. Um, that was, I think, $140. 
And then I got all that in and I started to kind of line it up with the post. And they said there's supposed to be a quarter inch gap of clearance. Uh, Rotary actually emailed me the, the PDF, but it wasn't on their website, but they had it. There's supposed to be a quarter inch clearance here um, on the edges. And when I did that, I noticed the safety lock was just barely making contact. So I said it must be worn pretty bad. Um, so while I had it apart, I did all new safety locks. And this is the old one. You can see this is what it would catch on and it's, it's kind of just rounded. It, it did come out to there. If you hold it up to, the, to this one or if I flip it up, you can see that it used to be a lot longer. So given that that is a safety feature, um, I replaced them and it was around $180 for all four of them from a company called uh, SVI. So everything is in, it's lubricated, it's working. You can see I got the turntables back on. I put some rubber hose around them just so it's not gonna get banged up. These pins are stainless rod that I bought and I just hammered into a little uh, bend. The old ones were mild steel and they're all rusty. For the airline, I've got some stainless rod that stretches the whole way. And I've got the coiled airline on that. It was like $18 shipped for both coiled hoses. So it's, it's cheap stuff, but it works. I did all new airline and safety latch line or whatever. One, one's for the, one will supply air to here, the thicker one. And then the smaller one is what operates the, the latches that I just replaced. And I got just the air hose connector hooked up to it temporarily so I can pull them in and test them before I got everything together. And then finally, I didn't like the gap around these turntables. I measured all of my cars. I'm not gonna have any need to ever move this over here. If I did, I could just remove this piece of wood. Uh, but I made this frame out of hardwood and this will fill the gap. And I'm probably gonna paint this uh, blue. I may even put a piece of stainless over it eventually, I don't know. But when, this, when these pins come out, this can hover over it and it fills the gap. And then the last thing is uh, this tank. This was all mingled up. It was kind of bent up from the bottom. All of the bolts had kind of pulled through and the ears had, had bent up. This was sagging. When I bought it, there was an actual ratchet strap that went around it to kind of help hold the tank up. So I straightened everything out and I put some stainless washers on the ears up here so that it, it grabs a lot better. So this should work without the ratchet strap now. So this will be the last update for this lift project. It's in, it's anchored to the floor, it's operational. Um, it goes up, it goes down. Uh, still a few things that I need to, to tweak on it, uh, but it's, it's technically fully working. Um, I'm gonna replace the hydraulic hose for this air jack. Uh, the one that's on it is, is too long. It was meant for the original air jack. This is a replacement one where it goes in the end. The original would come in over on the side. So they just replaced it with this and it's, it's too long a hose here. It doesn't fit well. Um, so I'm gonna get a shorter hose and a 90 degree fitting for that. I got the center rubber pads from eBay today for the air jacks. It is all painted. Um, you'll notice the, the ramps look a little bit darker. According to Summit Racing, that's the same color. I don't quite agree with them, uh, but they did refund my money for the quarter paint that I bought for them. And they're checking to see if they have some more paint there that has the same batch code as the, the previous two gallons that they sent to me. Um, it's also the same color for the, the trim piece for these turn plates. So I, I ordered a quart of paint just to do the ramps and those trim pieces. Uh, but it's, it's in and operational. Um, I do have a rebuild kit coming for the piston because it leaks just a little bit. It's, it's kind of a drip, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have a car under it or anything because I don't want hydraulic fluid to drip on my car. It was $86 or so for the rebuild kit and $10 shipping. So when that comes, I'll rebuild it. 
I got the pump all mounted. This is fully supported now uh, using those washers before this sagged down and actually had a big ratchet strap around it. Uh, for right now, I'm temporarily just using an extension cord and I hook the airline to, to this. Uh, once I get a two post lift in and run airline throughout the garage, it'll be wired up there to the ceiling and I'll have some track that, that goes around and comes down to this post. But for now, I'll just run power and air to it. I tried putting my RX-7 on it and it wanted to hit uh, right here, the center piece, the exhaust wanted to hit. So I had to stick some boards under here and I made these more official looking ramps out of wood, uh, just so they're the full width of the, the ramp and they go literally as, as far as I can with the, the door shut, maybe, maybe shy one inch. Uh, but this will give me the proper angle and I'll help putting my lowered cars on. Uh, these center air jacks do stick up 2.5 inches to the top of the yellow. Obviously I can remove the rubber pads. Uh, I cleared my RX-7 fine uh, the, the Supra exhaust hangs down a little lower. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. I, I have a feeling it, it may hit. Um, I may have to push one of the air jacks uh, kind of out of the way to get my Supra on here. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe it'll be really, really close. Um, I could also slide the yellow tops off if I wanted to, and that would gain me about a quarter of an inch. And you can see the plastic guards that I made. I've got new safety locks. I had to replace one pulley, one cable. Uh, but I'm super, super glad it's, it's done and it's just rebuilding the piston and then potentially repainting these if I get the right, the right paint. So let's just go up with it a little. down on its locks. So it goes up, goes down. So that's it. I'm probably going to do another video, um, not tying it into this one, but just to go over how to take these apart, how to put them together, how to do maintenance, what to lube the wear points, uh, maybe even how to rebuild the, a cylinder piston. Who knows? Because I couldn't really find anything online. Uh, about it when I was trying to do this. Um, also, what, what to inspect if you're, if you're buying one. I pretty much know everything that can be wrong with a lift now uh, after restoring this. So uh, it'll probably be a few weeks, but check back later.